is Razor from Razor's Edge. Um, there was a patch today, so Yvani, after releasing the preview Alpha 1, has went ahead and do, released a preview patch 1. So I actually had to start over. Um, I didn't make it where I wanted to be, but I wanted to show you, and I didn't have a lot of time today, um, a lot of questions that I've seen being asked, and that's economy and farming. So there's very specific things. This isn't going to be a long video. It's basically going to cover what you need so that you don't feel like you have to fish to survive uh, and, and feed your population. So we're also going to talk about money. You've probably seen where your villagers said they're no longer getting paid. We're also going to cover that. So those are the features that I want to cover to, in this video. Nothing else is set up. As you notice, I have nowhere near the amount of houses that I needed. Um, we're going to talk about logistics. Um, and then we're going to do, after this, we'll actually get, we'll do a series and we'll build this out piece by piece in episodes on building out what I would call the perfect village, talking about pathing, uh, looking at how long people walk. We're going to talk about some of the different decorations that you can do. Uh, things that will help benefit you, um, both in logistic positioning. Uh, we're going to talk about family households and their needs and employment. Um, and so that's the things we're going to be covering down the road. We might cover a little bit of that in today because it actually fits into the economy. But that's the focus of this video. So let's get started. So there's been a lot of questions about farming. Now with farming, once you hire a manager and you hire your workers, you can lay out your fields. And basically just to lay out a field, you click on the farm, you click on the field icon, and you basically find an unoccupied space. And I like to build them about 20 to 25 wide. I like to stay around 20 because that's what they can work with. And that's complete. So you click on the field and you can actually select the production that you want to make. And at this point, we want to make sunflowers. And I'll explain why later. These are actual steps. So in the next cycle, when you have a plow, you can change that. You can rotate that to fallow. Actually, I want to do fallow here. That gives the field a chance to get nutrients. And then we're going to do potatoes. So you can actually do crop rotation. Uh, and then all you need to do at that point is activate it, which, of course, it's going to tell me since it's almost winter, this, or it's the sowing season's over, so we've passed that. And that's it uh, as far as farms. So if I click on the farm itself, you can see my farming queue. Now, any point in these, I can actually drag these up and down in, in the order that they're worked on. So if I am, if I have needs on potatoes and here you can see as you don't, as you have it, don't have them plowed because without a plow, which you won't get until you get two oxen and a cart. You won't be able to, and, and with oxen, you're going to need stable, you're going to need food, which is these, these, these hay dryers. There's a lot of dependencies on getting ox and a plow uh, from the smithy to actually start plowing these fields. So you don't need any of that to start a farm. All you need to know is how to look at the various fields, what kind of shape they're in, and move them up in the queue so that you get the most food that you can out of your your farming. So let's talk a little bit about farming cycle. So the first cycle after the winter you have plowing which is obviously going to be skipped with every field that you build. Then there's a sowing phase, then a growth phase, then they get a ripe, and then they harvest. Now, obviously, there needs to be enough workers to actually harvest all that, and they will harvest it during the winter as well. 
and you can see with each field where they're at and what phase. So as you can see, this is completely out of order. Um, we've had issues with farming. Um, and again, that went with population and some other factors. So that's why this isn't going to be the city that I'm going to build. I just want to show you these key features. So if you look at the field we have right now, of course, there's not going to be any information on here except for our nutrition or our rotation. Um, so I think that covers pretty much all of farming except for how I actually get plowing. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So there's a couple things that you're going to need when you go to set up your farm or, or set up your plowing. And you're going to have to go get oxen. And I'll show you that in a minute. But basically with the farmhouse, once it's completed, and I don't believe it is. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to skip that actually. Let's talk about construction. Construction is basically, you, I know there's a lot of question about what are these lines. These lines are actually cues. So nothing can be done until, see, so you see these gaps. So at, when it reached the point of wood and nails, it needed work here. So basically it did some nails and some wood. Then there were, it required a worker. And then you got all these cycles of these two resources. And then there was a pause. It needed clay. Then you see that they've added more wood and more nails. And then it required more work. And right now, we actually require thatch. So this building is waiting on thatch. So at this point, I assume there's a delivery of thatch. And we can check where the thatch uh, worker is. And that's another thing we'll talk about as far as logistic building position and pathing. All right, let's talk about the trading post. The trading post basically is how you're going to earn money. Um, in here, in the trading post, you can actually put in here what you want to sell and you basically just fill up your trading post with as many resources as you want to keep in there and you can set up trade agreements with various uh, towns on the map. Now you're probably wondering, well, how, how do you do that? Well, basically, once you get that done, you can send one of your, your emissaries to that town and you can actually see what they export and what they import. So right now they're offering hemp and wheat, neither of which we need right now, but we are producing sunflower. So we can actually set up an agreement with that town and we can say, well, and you want to make sure that this um, matches the number that you're actually producing and storing in your trade house because if it's not there they'll break the agreement and then you just click on deal and it'll go ahead and it requires nothing further from you so in order to actually work with these towns and set up agreements you have to have someone there so right now I have two so on this one I have their demands are shoes and wheat neither of which we're producing they do have dried fish but we have nothing to trade with. It's all bartering. So we can put dried fish in here and we can say we want, oh, I don't know, 16 or 15 units and we can say deal and that'll actually buy. So it's more than just bartering. There's money too, but I need to talk about that later. But we're going to be spending 150 per trip for them to bring 15 fish. So we probably don't want that deal. That's not a very good deal. Now on this particular map, um, I'm how to pronounce that, Balak, Balakia is a, uh, basically we're gonna, we're gonna send a messenger on his way. Um, I like to call him emissaries, but we're, we're gonna send him on his way and I'll show you how you actually purchase cattle. So in order to have cattle, you need two things. Oops, hold on a second. So just like you did with the farms, once this building, this trading, or this cow shed is finished, you'll have an option up here to build a field. 
right now and uh, it'll appear up here as an icon and you actually just drag it out and it creates a furrow field now if you do have a furrow field they'll use that instead and they'll graze on that instead of having one there so what these are for are hay dryers and the hay dryers are what feed your cattle or whatever livestock you have while uh, it's winter so when I said work was gender based so if we click on a particular household you can notice that females can farm and males do most of the labor so like what the smithy the fisherman all of the manual labor type jobs are done by um, the the male and the female can actually do these type of jobs and they actually just collect the grass and they stack it up in these little triangles um, they are free to build there's a lot of actual free to build things in here and that's how you get those set up and so what's nice about that is that when you start setting up these stalls they're going to be spending money and the only way that they can make money is is to be able to afford to buy these potatoes so you may say i i've got 500 potatoes in here and yet people are leaving because they say they don't have any money well part of the problem is you ran out you're not able to pay them so let's talk about that a little bit so there's a couple icons you've probably seen up here and you've hovered them hovered over them and you've said okay i see that i've got this ticking down what is this is it my resources it's actually your expenditure report. So right now, here is our income, and that comes from housing rent and local sales from our um, our folks down here, our, and then also our imports. So that's where these trade routes come in handy. As you can see, our expenses right now are very high. Um, we're spending $328 or coin, um on uh expenses and it, it's increasing as we start doing more trade so in able to get more control over this you build a town hall and you can actually set a lot of limitations so let's go ahead and close that window so i can also click on the people icon which you notice when i just hover hover over it it shows you pretty much why migration isn't taking place not enough food not enough housing not enough jobs and water supply and it'll show you of course how many vacant houses you have open vacancies and uh, folks looking for jobs and right now we have none everybody's employed but when I actually drill into that you can actually see the age over time you can see the working labors open vacancies and you can see your wealth distribution so here you can see the employment bar right now we're at about between 90 it looks like 92 percent employment and we can see in here our wealth distribution so right now we're we have a moderate mild middle class um, so 5 to 20 wealth distribution 40 to 100 in the yellow and 100 plus in in this so this gives you a breakdown of your wealth distribution and as you can see it it doesn't look too good right now <laughs> so again it shows you the migration status and it'll also show you all of your employment and all of your animals boats pretty much everything you have going on right now as far as businesses okay so our messenger has arrived and as you can see they demand potatoes which we don't have any to spare right now um, but we do have a cow now at any time we can recall these just by bringing that employee back um, by getting rid of them within our building but let's go back here and let's talk about cows so you can buy iron from there if you're on one of the two maps and two of the maps actually don't have iron available and well that's again a logistics thing we're going to talk about here in a second but let's talk about cows 
So here you can actually in this city buy bulls or oxen. In this case, we need two oxen. So we can set that there. And we can cl click on deal, but the problem is, and it's going to cost us 170, but it's a one time cost. So, but the problem is, if I do that right now, there's no place for the cattle to go. Why? Because there's no cow shed. So we are set up very poorly here. We're actually going to have to use a furrow field that we just built. Actually, we're going to have to build another one. Um, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speed up time. And you can, we're going to do it in this mode. And you can watch the money dwindle. You can see our treasury is going down very quickly. And I want to make sure that that is in the queue. Now we did talk about work queues. I have the fishing dock paused. It's got construction in progress. If we click on the building itself, we can actually see what phase it's in. You can click on any of the labors and find out how far they have. So if I went into pathing right now, what I found out is that I have a horrible layout. Completely horrible. They have to travel too far for water. There's not enough market stalls. They're traveling too far for everything. Now these wagons coming in are actually coming in with our trade deal. And they're going to get mad. Let's see. Oh, I guess there was some in there. So they're actually buying units. So that's actually going to punch our cash flow, cash flow up, which is pretty nice. But we're not producing much hemp right now. A lot of it's just laying out here in the field. Those are potatoes. But out here, and I don't even think we have a hemp field anymore. All right, what are we waiting on here? What phase are we in? We're waiting on clay. So I don't see any delay. There's the clay. You see that's dropped off. So we're in this phase right now. So a laborer has to actually come in and put the clay in. Once enough gets, you'll see over here, it'll say waiting for. So it has what it needs. We just need a laborer. And we've got people that have, le or have left because there's not enough food, because our crop rotation. We went to two crop rotations and noticed that the quality of the output was too low, too many fields. And just not enough time to get all the resources out of them. So we're still waiting on a laborer to finish this building. And you just see another family ran out of food. And they're waiting for potatoes. Even though there's 1.877 there. So we can hire somebody and try to get more over here. But we just don't have any laborers. And by hiring someone here, we just took another laborer, so we may never get this building done. But that's okay. That does it explains a lot about how to get a plow in there so you can do your field rotation and you can actually get understand a little bit about fields. You do need the granary because that's where uh, potatoes and all of your output are stored. So that's important to note. So the last thing I want to talk about is some of the logistics. Clay pits. I know they're ugly, but they really need to be somewhere close to your construction area, preferably where carts are. So you want a cart barn, if not building one, you, you want to get it as close to the carts as you can. So that's talking about clay. Let's talk about trees. So as you notice, they've had to travel further and further to get to trees. If I go under decorations, there are actual pine trees in here. You can actually plop these down. 
and they will regrow. So they're more than just decoration. They're actual trees that you can grow over time to make sure that you continue to keep production up on your tree farm and keep it as close to your sawmill as possible. So that's something else to think about. All right. Other thing we can talk about, if you notice, all the people that live in these houses come all the way back down here to get both water and to rest on these horrible logs. We have workbenches, or I'm sorry, we have benches. We can actually bring these benches and set them along the roadsides. And people will start actually using them to sit. I can't build there. And you can rotate these around. So as you can see, they're using them to sit down. The other thing is water. So we know that water is... Uh, right here so as you can see they're going way too far for water and let's use the so it's the T and the R key and I'm gonna put the well end on this end and that'll add that to the queue so you want that to be in wherever your town center is so Markets, the market needs to be over there. I would recommend doing like a circle, uh, you know, like a cul-de-sac and put the market in there, um, things like that. Carts over, you know, where the granary, anything that uses carts. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is reeds and rocks. So the smithy, which we have none right now, um, they go to rock to actually get the metal or the ore that they need to make the nails. So if you build your smithy all the way over here, if we scroll out, there are, he's going to have to either come all the way down here or all the way up there. So you want to build him as close as you can to where he's going to be getting the rock he's going to produce that much faster. Same thing for the thatchery. So I built my thatchery just playing around with bridges, which look quite nice, by the way, near reeds. What I found was, though, instead of the pathing for him, he was going all the way down here to get reeds. So... I'm not sure why he's not crossing the bridge to get the reeds or if I need to build the thatchery over here and then he would cross the bridge. But as you can see, it's full of reeds. So this would be a great place. So on the next build, that's something that I'm going to try. And you can see we're coming up on winter. So our, we'll probably lose just about everybody here from starvation. I don't know what our output was from our wheat farm. But those are just some of the logistic things that you need to think about. We've already talked about work cues in the previous video. Um, but those were some important things that I wanted to go over as far as checking wealth and income and how your people get paid. And then also checking on, yeah, see, you can see our, our class. We're, we're going to lose just about everybody here. So... Um, and it's all due to food. So we, you know, more families are running out of food. So just think about those as you're building your towns out. I think it'll be more helpful as you start to plan these out. Um, if you did get the, the humble bundle or you purchased the copy of, of the game on, on um, uh, um, the developer's website, um, you you want to make sure you get this newest patch because it actually fixed a, a lot of uh, a lot of fixes 
um, how, you know, one of the things I noticed is, and I don't know if that was in before or not, but I just, when I was watching, I noticed, hey, these houses all look different. They're all unique. Um, sort of paying more attention to costumes and things like that that are authentic to the, that time period. So anyway, um, I'm going to start an episode on this. Um, I'm going to do it stage by stage just for people that are brand new to the game. That it, So it's out there when uh, this comes out on Steam when or when the game's finished or when they first purchase it um, for my viewers. So there are going to be like 30 minutes. Okay, here's how to get all the houses set up for the winter. Okay, here's the logistics of setting up. You know, what do I need? What do I don't need? Um, how do I move the queue? You know, things like that. Um, just based on what I'm seeing uh, as a result of pauses um, and resources. So that's my goal uh, as far as a series, and that that's it. That's as far as I'm going to go with the advanced. The, the last piece I'll actually do in the tutorial, and that'll be the the last piece that's in there right now. If they add more, um, we'll definitely show those off as well. Um, education, obviously, is still being worked on, religion and health, um, but the town hall. And the town hall is actually going to do a lot, give you a lot more control. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this useful. If you do, please click like um, and uh, leave feedback on what you'd like to see. Um, until next time, this is Razor from Razor's Edge, and I'll see you when I see you.